It was a great sight. All India sings in pilgrimage in the quest of God. That is the most significant of religion is the quest of God. If you do not search what is religion, what is we call God, within our soul we fail to realize that absolute, that supreme light. So he was amazed and then he said, I suppose really everyone or everywhere is only India is conscious about it. There lies the difference with the other world. At Bhubaneshwar, though she wrote 18 miles from Puri, but it is actually 40 miles from Puri. The capital of Orissa and the site of 1000 temples, Swami Brahmananda, the direct disciple of Ramakrishna Devo, had built a fine new Ramakrishna Math temple and dispensary. He wrote, Listen carefully what she wrote next slide. So, the new wine, so the new wine of this last great incarnation, means Lord Sri Ramakrishna, is already re nourishing the ancient India, not modern India, but ancient India, India of holiness, India of purity, India of God. The absolute soul. We are re nourishing ancient India. And the desert again blooming into life and fertility. I was moved by it all. One feels oneself to be on a tide, floating on the deep heart of the oceans of life. As Swami Ji puts, without effort, without will. Floating on the deep earth of ocean of life, means Swami Ji beautifully once said to her, Your heart is the river of your life, and your head is the bridge over that river. So, when you will be complete, if, if and complete comes in front of you, listen and follow your heart. That means heart is the sign of absolute God. After that, she soon came to Belmont. On the side of Ganges. She loved she loved Ganges very much, so she wrote again her name. 14th August 1923. How I love this Ganges. No wonder the monks worship it. It is so interesting, so living, so vital that never by chance the same. Just see, she watched the Ganges and wrote about it in so detail that it is so living, so vital. Everywhere they had the flavor of divinity, divinity of that holy child. That reflection they got within Swami Vivekananda. Next, that Following year, she stayed most of the time in the guest house of the Bengal Mott. And there she very keenly observed and discovered that the source of spirituality was none other than Lord Sri Ramakrishna Deva who had drawn to himself all those who came at mort including herself. So
So again, again she wrote on 4th September 1923 to her niece. We hear all these beloved candles. It's a constant joy. I know one long prayer and worshipful service goes on to Sri Ramakrishna as if he were the most beloved of living gurus. Listen to this event very carefully. How it is relating till today with us, how it is connecting with us. Dear Naik, thinking of him with Lord Sri Ramakrishna Bhakti. His taste, his lies, his predilections, absorbing all love and devotion of these 30 and 40 monks. It is their youth and enthusiasm that amazes me. It never grows still to day. Each flower, fruit, water, incense, camphor, clothes, light, clothes means literally the new chakra and protis are offered with respectful devotion as he way. Living literally secondly. Is it not right today? She wrote in the year 1923, and we have already passed 2023, so it's already more than 100 years, and already we are going to celebrate 125th of the organization celebration. But the routine is still the same, and it will be also. The oncoming days, literally the holy trio is a living embodiment of divinity to us. They are not only a mere photo or a picture. I will also tell that story, very heart-touching story within a few moments. So, they, she again wrote, each flower, fruit, clothes, everything offered, with soulful devotion, they comes fight and fun. Fight means hubble bubble the hookah. He usually used to have hookah after lunch. So she also mentioned mentioned they fight and fun means bitter now, bitter leaf. And they comes his afternoon sleep. Chapel closed to be open for the afternoon service of refreshment and then Arati or even sun after dusk then all the monks continue to meditate on him till their evening meal at 9 pm that means the prasad. They had prasad at 9 pm till then they meditate on Ramakrishna. And after that, again she concluded that even some all night, some months throughout the night to meditate on it. We say, where is God? We offer everything to them. We, we offer our and plus everything today also to Holy Child. But how could he know that whether he accepted that prasad or not? Ask your conscience. Ask your soul. And for that you need purity, holiness, each and every bone, every muscle and every vein of your flesh, your body, your blood. If you have that purity, you will suddenly realize, you will know, yes, Holy Thakur, the Lord Ramakrishna may accept our intelligence. Yes, he is 
enjoying whatever we are doing, whatever we are giving our soulful devotion to Him with our holiness and purity, He must accept. Once upon a time, very beautifully asked Swamiji by someone in the West, where shall we find God? So I just looked at him. Huh? Are you silly? It is always with you. It is within yourself. What does it mean? When you will do some good work, if you when you cry for your fellow brothers, for your ashram, for your state, for your mother dad, for the world. That time you were born with God. That time you will be, you will also become a God. Swamiji always said, God is done. Other than just to stand in front of the mirror, you will see who is God. If you have that purity, that burning renunciation, burning salvation, then you will realize that. So, she beautifully concludes that now I am beginning to see that when the present is so deep and it does become eternity. That year, in 1923, we had Dukha Puja. You know Dukha Puja? The three day worship of Swamiji, his nation and his motherland 
our mother in India. Try to relax, my boys. This is the high time. If you miss the pleasure, if you miss the love of your beloved motherland, you cannot be a good children. You cannot be the pride children of your motherland. So don't take it as a mere joke. Repeatedly adding 
that Mr. A says he was always in what kind of ways? What was he according to you? Then Avadananda said he was a god intoxicated man. Then you rest. How he teach you all? By questions and answers or how? Swami replied, no. He would speak on by himself. And by that, we would got all the answers. Whatever was passing in our mind. Once I asked him how he knew all these things. And he beautifully I can see everything through your eyes. I can see everything through your eyes. Your eyes are like a glass window to me. So do not think that whatever you are doing wrong, he will not. He can see it. So always be careful. And try to make your life holy. Pure. Then you will see, whatever you are doing, even your study, in your study you will memorize everything very quickly, very easily. Because mind is very strong that time. Nerves are very strong. You can capture anything like a photograph in your mind. So, when Shantanamuji came, Again she asked, what was the most outstanding teacher of Sri Ramakrishna? He also missed a question. And when she said, Ain says God consciousness, he said, yes, that was the principal aspect, but there were other things according to the temperament of Bhaktas. That was the most significant teacher of Lord Sri Ramakrishna. He gave lessons, he gave his teachings according to the likings, to the mentality and the nature of the devotee or the God. They in reply, but all the ideas were centered around him, Joseph is the head. Next, I will come to Saint Sarah. Do you know the name Saint Sarah? Mrs. Olipur, the steady mother of Swami Vivekananda, who was the most significant role in executing the Ramakrishna Vivekananda movement in the world. She offered to make a large contribution, listen carefully, a large contribution of $5,000 in the year 1895 to Swami Vivekananda for his Indian work, for the work for India. But you know what Swami did? That's why till today and tomorrow he will be the most living God of the world. He refused that money. In the year 1995, he refused that money. She was shocked. She was disappointed. Because people always try to take the advantage of a huge property. But Swami so refused. Mr. Olibu once told her, Mr. Olibu was her husband. The world famous violinist. Told her, India was the home of Bali, and India's poetry, philosophy, music, he felt to be unparalleled in the world. Because of this and her own personal indebtedness to Vedanta, they is Western people. They always believe in the Advaita. Advaita philosophy, you know, the oneness of God. They believe.
that the God and the living entity are in reality eternally one. So they are bit away from all these external ceremonies. So that is called Advaita philosophy in very simple term, oneness of God. So for this indented days, she wanted, she had a great desire to be of some help to Swamiji's work for Indian education. But Swamiji was not in that mood to accept money from anybody. So he wrote in a letter on 14 February 1895 from New Year and then he was, I will relate to Sri Ramakrishna. He wrote again according to Manu collecting funds even for a good work is not good for a sannyasi. And I have begun to feel that the old sages were right. And by thus, I am more a sannyasi now, even I even was in America. Collecting funds even for the good work. Swamiji was in the absolute burning renunciation. That supreme mood in that area at that time. But as she was very shocked, very grieved, Swamiji wrote in a letter again to her and told her the secret of his complete faith in her. What is the secret of that complete faith in her? He wrote, You are the only one with whom Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna Devo has become the one goal of your life. Only Lord Sri Ramakrishna is the goal of your life because all the Western admirers they belong to me. They love only Vivekananda, but only within you I saw. I can feel, I can realize that you love actually Lord Sri Ramakrishna. That is the secret of my full faith and confidence in you. This is called the love of a true desire to his Guru. Swamiji never spoke too much about his master. He rather shattered. He always felt much scared, much feared, scared to speak anything about his Guru. Because whatever he will speak, he always cried that will be very, very near, very here in front of his huge oceans of divinity. So he is scared to speak of this. This is for the true love, true devotion. Then we will come to Mother Saviour as we, are, we, are, we have some help. Mother Saviour, Mr. Captain Saviour and Mrs. Sharnak Sahir, these two English people, this couple came in India with Swamiji to establish and nurture the Advaita Ashrama of a, a remote place of the Himalayas in 1899. Advaita Ashrama Mayavati named this Ashrama. And Mrs. Saviour was the mother of Mayavati. Even Holy Mother also has to refer to her as Mother Saviour. She was very remarkable devotee of our order. And no wonder that he, she also contributed a large sum towards the construction of Belumot, the headquarter of the Ram. One day, Mother Saviour 
was asked a question as she was a pure Advaiti. I told him about Advaita philosophy one day ago. She was asked as an Advaiti, how do you look upon Sri Ramakrishna without a moment's hesitation? She replied. Of all the men that have appeared on the earth, of all the men that have, that have appeared on earth, I considered he means Lord Sri Ramakrishna Deva is the greatest. Just see, a non dualistic soul is saying, Sri Ramakrishna, who is the worshipper of the Divine Mother Kali, is saying the greatest of all. Look, because she had a deep veneration, she knew that Sri Ramakrishna Deva is the real flood light, the beckon light towards the heaven. Make your life reach. Rich, not by money. We need it, but what is essential in our life, you know, to know your own soul. It is very hard. We need longest prayer and then, if we have that greatest blessing, we may have that realization. After that, I will tell a very beautiful story now. Lord of Blame. I think you didn't have hear this name before. Lord of Blame, later, Sister Devo Mother was the American disciple of a whom? Whose disciple? No. She was not the disciple of Swami Vivekananda, though she met him in the year 1895 and she had she had attended almost his classes during 1895 and 1896 but she felt as he was the prophet of infinitude he was the living god when he stood on the platform reflects his divinity so she felt some intangible barrier she wrote that I felt an intangible barrier between us. So she was the very first disciple of Swami Paramananda. And who was Swami Paramananda? The youngest monk, monastic disciple of Swami Vivekananda. The youngest monastic disciple of Swami Vivekananda. You just see, she again came to that, that circle, that wave of ocean, Swami Vivekananda. Because Paramananda was also the disciple of Swami Vivekananda and in December 1906, he came to the west to assist Swami Vivekananda for New Year Veda Sunday. And you will be happy, again happy to hear that in 1911, Swami Paramananda came to Puri with Swami Brahmananda Ji Maharaj for a quiet retreat. And in 1912, he started a very eminent journal, the message of the East. So anyway, he was also a profound, he had also profound spirituality. And he initiated Lord of Lee in the year March of 1907 and named her Devo Mata. Devo Mata means the mother of God and Goddess. And she was the editor of Swamiji's book. Inspired talk. It was an it was a conversation of Swamiji's talk at Thousand 
Island Park which consists of 43 days classes. But who was the real transcriber of this book you know? That was Miss Sarah L. L. Waldo. A distant collection of Ralph Waldo Emerson. If you do not know this name, you will miss the flavor of the events. Swami Vivekananda initiated her with Brahmacharya and named her sister Kuridashi. Kuridashi means servant of God. Who was Kuridashi? Miss Waldo. Who was Devamata? Laura Kim. And now we will come to the connection between them. Devamata recalled in her exquisite expression that in May of 1907, I was invited to visit a close friend at Jewett in the Catskill Mountain. Southeastern of New York State. Very carefully listen to this event, otherwise you will miss one of the beautiful events of the Ramakrishna order what happened that year. Listen to it. She was there in actually in Hansen Mountain. A half mile away stood the farmhouse of Miss Waldo, who passed her summer there. I already told you, you all know with Miss Waldo, Sarah Ellen Waldo, disciple of Swamiji, Devo Mata, disciple of Swami Parama Nanda. Now they are meeting. She recalled Devo Mata. I saw her mostly, but my days were spent most often in wandering over the hills or through the woods, memorizing Bhagavad Gita and American lady who had a huge luxurious life in a solitude memorizing Bhagavad Gita. Can you say, are they not a real God? Then who will be God if they are not? In the solitude, she was not enjoying anything, she was studying, memorizing Bhagavad Gita as she wrote, as I walked. And in my Gita, I carried, now the climax is coming, in my Gita I carried a small photograph of Lord Sri Ramakrishna Deva. One who died on my Gita, from one of these rambles, I had a distressing experience. That experience was very real to her. What happened that day? She wrote, the picture was gone. To us only a photograph, a mere photo of Lord Sri Ramakrishna. Sometimes we kept in our copy. Well, nothing mattered to us. But now realize what she said. The picture was gone. Without waiting for food or rest, because I told about the time, noon time, means it's the period of luncheon. Luncheon means lunch time. We enjoyed our meal because that time we feel hungry. Without waiting for food or rest, I searched every way. I went back and forth, tortured all the while with the thought that 
a foot might strike the picture or an iron hoof may crush it. She thought so many bad things. You, if it happened that Sri Ramakrishna may, she he might affected by hurt by someone. Then it was all her mistake. It was all her fault. She should be much more careful. But she didn't took any care. She tortured herself. She was crying. She was weeping that time. Then she said, but I did not stop searching. Until nightfall I searched. But to no avail. No. I didn't get the picture. After that I searched so many times. But the picture was never found again. Then what she said you know. It's a tremendous benefit to us. She said from that day the hills of Jewett were sacred to me because somewhere in their tangled grass lay hidden a holy face. When she was tortured with all the thoughts, then she remembered, you know, my way had been across the untreated fields and unfrequented woodlands. Then did my mind grow quieter that no, our Thakur, Lord Sri Ramakrishna, they might be saved. And that day, hills were sacred to her. Because that face hold the face, that holy face, the divine face. And then she felt that as if they were, it was seen that that hills were being made ready to sound the echo of a voice that was spoken 12 years before and was now silent. About whom she talked. She met 12 years before the year 1907 count. 12 years back. The year we found is 1895 when she first met Swami Vivekananda. She recalled that now this is me. The sound that echo of a voice, the voice of a God, that none other than Swami Vivekananda. After that, Miss Waldo came to her and After that, Miss Waldo came to her and said, as she was to leave Jewett and have to return to her own place, oh, Laura, I forgot to say, we have still one thing to do. I have the notes of Swamiji's, the classes that are taken at Thousand Island Park. I replied quickly, but there is still time. Let us begin tomorrow. And we sat on that rude farmhouse veranda and I sat facing that hills, that hills that held the holy picture of Lord Sri Ramakrishna. One listened, another ready. When the last word had died away, I told her, it is a criminal for you to keep these notes to yourself that belong to God. They belong to the world and this is the history of inspired talks of Swamiji relating Lord Sri Ramakrishna.
just fill their devotion even a sacred hills even a jewel the hills of the catskill were sacred shrine to her because of that holy face as the face was needed there can you have that can we have that devotion no my dear but at least me not i am trying to learn i am trying to get i try to reach enrich my thoughts enrich my life each and every moment so this is my so do not waste your time before i stop i must conclude with my noble sisters few lines otherwise i cannot go from here she wrote this letter on 5th march 1905 sunday and the event was on wednesday she wrote it is sri rama krishna's real birthday today in first march 1905 we wait to the month with the rose with we may she and swami vivekananda's another disciple sister christine together went to the month with rose this morning and yet on the soul side sri ram krishna is a baby today now listen the whole day worship whatever you have done today this is the highest touch of the god she said beautifully sri ram krishna is a baby today and we ask nothing of babies we be all today is it not right when we when we go home our parents always give love to they are eagerly waiting for us to give us am i right so life without any what i am thinking really the evening bell sounding at this moment is so sweet the air is full of worship the starlight the evening bell new moon pray it is like the presence of holy mother it is like the concentrated sweetness of twilight how wonderful especially when holy mother is at worship what does it mean if you worship lord sri ramakrishna without feeling without realizing, realizing the blessings of holy mother that is not a complete worship the radha and krishna without radha no krishna so always always we have to surrender our life to mother we all are the children of the divine mother so think yourself think your life yes we are the children of god so how can we be the weekend how can we be the only how can we be the important in our life so make your life divine even each and every bones of your life unto your backbone it must be holy it must be pure and then you will see you know you will realize the absolute right which is here in your deeper heart is now in front of you तमेव माता च पिता तमेव तमेव बंधु च सखा तमेव तमेव विद्या द्रविणं तमेव तमेव सर्वं मामेव देव इन सुरिया माय फादर माय मदर माय फॅमिली माय फ्रेंड्स माय नॉलेज माय वेल्थ इट शुड बी एट माय ओन ओ लॉर्ड ऑफ लॉर्ड श्री राम कृष्ण यू आर so have the blessings of chatur maswami ji to make your life holy and blessed for your mother jai jai